Hey, I'm Kenneth Weidstra. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my Leica Talks, all things Leica. So today I want to talk about what may be my favorite of the Leica M's. And it's the Leica M2. And I'll tell you, the Leica M2 came out after the Leica M3. So the M3 came out in 1954. Here's a little bit of the history. 1954, they had been making the Barnack Leicas and they had this new revolutionary camera going to come out with this big giant viewfinder. It was a little bit taller than the Barnack Leicas, but they were all ready to launch it. And it came out with the Leica M3 was called the three because it had three frame lines, the 50, the 90, and the 135, all you could ever want. Except for people said, well, well I, don't, I don't want, I want a 35. So they came out with the second Leica, which was called the M2. Very strange. But the M2 had frame lines for 35, 50, and 90. That is my favorite combination. So all of the Leicas that I use, I tend to put a diopter on so that I can get my vision corrected in the viewfinder so that when I look through here, it's not all blurry. And so I can see the whole viewfinder because the distance between your glasses and the viewfinder is enough to make it so that you can't see the edges. And what's the point of having a Leica and making the best photography with the best tools, but not really being able to see it? That's one of the questions that I have to answer with a diopter. Because once I put a diopter on, yeah, I gotta move my glasses out of the way, but now I can see 100% through the viewfinder, which is what they made it for. And if you're left-eyed like me, you still have this eye kind of blocked up by the camera body. If you're right-eyed, you're really lucky because I can't do it, but you can keep your eye open and you can watch things entering and exiting the frame. But the idea of the M2, if you're looking for a camera, the M3s tend to go for a lot, and I think they go for a little bit more than the M2s. If you find an M2 in user condition, and I suggest when you search, search for listings on eBay that say, like a user, like a M2 user. If it's user grade, if the person selling it even calls it that, now you know that they're not expecting it to go to a collector. You want to get it to one that you can use, and if you're going to use it, you're not worried if it's got a few scratches on it from an old light meter. This one has a little couple scratches on it from an old light meter, so what? I'm not using it to put it in a display case, I'm using it to go make photographs. Now, this one, I'm very lucky to have a 35 1.4 Sumalux on it. I was looking at somebody locally who was selling a, an M3 and they included this lens in the purchase price. They didn't realize it was any better and they didn't raise the price. So I think I spent $1,200 on an M3 and a 35 Sumalux and a 51.5 Sumari. And that was their asking price. And I was surprised I didn't ever have a 35 Sumalux. And again, I'm not working to buy a great deal and take advantage of somebody to the point of, oh, I'm going to go make a mint on this. I'm not going to use it. Anything I buy is only so I can use it and use it up. My whole approach to photography is get inspired by the gear you want, but then go make photographs with it. Don't baby it. Make photographs, make art. That's the only thing that these are good for not looking at them on a shelf because the scratches are, you know, missing. It, this one has scratches. The Leica M2 has a outside film counter. You actually have to set it after you load the film back to zero or one, whereas the Leica M3 had it internal. That's the one thing that you can tell when you're looking at Leica's. If you see that counter and it's on the outside like that, that tells you it's an M2. Do I think that it's the build quality of the M3? I do. When they first came out, people said it was like a low budget M3, but it's not. It's all brass, it's solid, it weighs a pretty good significant amount that makes you feel like it's really quality. And with that 35 1.4, which I don't always shoot wide open, again, a lot of times I'm documenting. I'm a documentary photographer. I'm looking to make photographs that show my friends or document a news story in a certain world. 
And I want to put that world in the photo. I don't want it all blurry. I don't want the background all soft all the time. This lens is super great at f8. It's really good at f2. I tend to use 1.4 when I absolutely need it. But the idea of you go into a situation and you need that 1.4, you still have it. But I wouldn't recommend buying it unless you got that deal. Unless something came along and it was pretty much without extra cost. Because the 1.4 goes for crazy money. And this isn't a newish one. This is an older one. The newer ones are really expensive. But if you can live with an F2, you can save some money. I would do that. And ultimately, you're looking for a tool that you're going to be able to take out. If you spend $5,000 on a 35 1.4 and $1,000 on a body and you're afraid to take it out because it's too valuable, this isn't that valuable. This is usable. Everything I have, I'm putting new scratches onto. Everything I have, I'm running film through. And the point is, make photographs. Use the Leica. It has gone to war. It can take a beating. You can put it in your briefcase. You don't have to worry about it. I keep a lens cap on it, but I'm not that worried about it. I think it's the kind of thing where find a deal. Don't buy until you get the deal. Keep an eye out and watch. You'll see deals will show up. And there will be a lot of times when there are no deals. There will be a lot of times when the price is just through the roof. Just let those go. Those aren't the ones we end up talking about. It's been 15 years that I've been using Leica and all of these cameras have come to me over the course of watching and waiting, but never because I wanted one and went out and bought it. Get the camera when the opportunity comes up. You get a deal, get what you want. Don't pay for things you don't need, but also don't try to get it the moment that you think about it because you're just going to pay through the roof because Leica gear at retail prices is expensive. Ask around, ask relatives. They might have one that they said, oh, my grandpa had, and he liked you. Well, we can give you a good deal on that. I've had relatives and friends say, hey, somebody in my family has a bag of Leicas. And I'll say, I can't afford to pay what you can get if you want to get it checked and warranted and send it to a sale through an eBay or through an auction site. But I can give you this much. And they're like, yeah, that's okay. We just want to get it into some good hands. If those hands are yours, you now have a Leica without paying that full price. Many of my Leicas have come that way, where people had a lead to somebody who had one, and they just wanted to get it to somebody who would appreciate it and take care of it. So ask around. Tell people that you're looking. They may say, oh, I had no idea you would be interested. That's a good way to get into a Leica without paying full retail. And now you have a camera that can do Everything that you wanted to, you don't have to worry about, do I ever need to upgrade my film camera? You don't. You have the best tool in your hand. All right, that's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button, and I'll be back, and we'll talk more like a love. As always, here's the good light.